six. Uh, what should we get a move on? Yeah. Let's get a move on. OK, so I'm, I'm Mayor John Biggs. Can I welcome people uh, to the meeting? This is part of our consultation um, on uh, on leisure services and future of the leisure contracts and uh, the specific questions about St George's. In theory, this meeting could be about um, uh, could be about anything in the strategy, but experience tells us it's going to be overwhelmingly about the St George's pool issue. Um, the format of the meeting is I'm going to start the meeting and introduce um, myself. I'll ask I'll ask the other participants in the meeting to introduce themselves. So I think we have three others uh, in who are presenters. There's myself. There's um, Sabina Akhtar. Who are you, Sabina Akhtar? Thank you, Mia. So my name is Councillor Sabina Act. I'm the Cabinet Member for Culture, Arts and Sports. And who are you, Judith St John? Good evening, everybody. I'm Judith St John and I'm the Director of um, Commissioning and Culture. And that means it's only for me to ask James Thomas who he is. James Thomas. Good evening. One. Good evening. I'm James Thomas. I'm the Corporate Director for Children and Culture. OK, and you're James Thomas one because we already employ a James Thomas kept his name so you had to change your name legally that's not true but um okay so the purpose of the meeting is to is to uh, do a presentation on the on the leisure strategy but particularly on this and george's option and so there's a couple of opening slides on the leisure strategy but most of it's about st george's options and the position that we're in um we're going to be recording the meeting and the recording will start has started already uh people are joining into the meeting uh, so it's I think it's what technically they call sods law that um, I say let's get a move on and then people start joining the meeting, which is fine. Um, so we're now up to. Eight, but we'll get let's let's this thunder on. So we're recording the meeting. It's an open teams meeting. Anyone can contribute. So we need a bit of etiquette, which means you should keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking and we have the power to mute you. Um, and we're happy to do that. And. Um, uh, and if you want to speak, then you should, if possible, use the hands raised function on your on your um, computer. Uh, if you can't do that, then um, you need to need to signal um, by being visible. You can also use the chat box to ask questions in the chat line, make comments. We can respond to those either orally or um, if if the volume of those becomes considerable and they're maybe a bit tangential, we can all, we can reply to them in the text. Be grateful if people are respectful to others. Um, you shouldn't make any assumptions about where we're planning to go with this because we're consulting. Um, so we're recording and the main link to the consultation page is I think in the chat box for this meeting already, or if not, it will be in a second. Um, so I think that will be added in a second. And um, uh, let's get a move on then. Uh, so I think when I say let's get a move on, I mean that James Thomas is going to take over and present to us a slideshow. James. Thank you very much, Mayor. So yes, I'm going to take us through um, a slide set um, which set out the key issues on which we're consulting. Uh, and then we'll then I'll invite any any additional comments from the Mayor and Councillor Akhtar, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, as the mayor says, either raise your hand or, or you can pop a, chest, a question in the chat if you prefer. So um, opening slides uh, shows the uh, current seven leisure centres that we have in the borough. Um, Dean, if you want to move on. Uh, and this is what I'm going to cover in, in the slide set. I'll try and get through it fairly briskly so that we've got lots of times for, for question and, and debate. Um, so I'm going to take you through what the mayor's made a commitments to, what we've done since last meeting, uh, recent investment in leisure, the scope of the consultation, and then we're going to drill down a bit into the options. Um, uh, and uh, we set out uh, the options for uh, restoring swimming and leisure capacity in the southwest of the borough uh, in a feasibility study that we published, uh, and then we'll conclude with next steps. So. Mayoral commitments. The mayor's made commitment to maintain five pools for the borough, uh, to complete the feasibility study of John Orwell, which is done, to ensure access for swimming for primary primary school children, um, and support for local residents. And we'll come back to say a little bit more about that. 
uh, a commitment to transparency and answering questions, which this meeting uh, is one of a series of meetings that we've been having a uh, public consultation in the autumn, which is ongoing now uh, until the new year, uh, both on the wider issues of uh, leisure provision with the current contract delivered by uh, GLL, branded as better in the borough, ending in April 2024. Dean, if you want to move on. So uh, consultation commenced on the 15th of November and is open till the 3rd of January. Uh, and we're really pleased that we've had lots of uh, responses already coming in. Uh, I think 150, uh, just short of 150 formally already. Um, we've published the feasibility study, um, which is available online. Uh, we've published survey data uh, and we'll be publishing more next week. And we've had a series of open access sessions uh, across the borough as well as online meetings. Um, so a quick summary of the council's recent investments in leisure across the borough um, and that this doesn't just focus on our leisure centres. Uh, in, uh, significant investment in playgrounds, uh, two million pounds, 17 playgrounds refurbished uh, and two more to come shortly. We've also invested significant amounts in improving the sports facilities within our parks, uh, including uh, new outdoor gyms um, and refurbishing of, of tennis courts uh, and the multi-use games areas uh, and improvements to changing rooms. Um, and we've invested in the refurbishment of the two pools that have need significant repairs, Tiller, which is almost ready for reopening, uh, and York Hall, which is going to take a little longer. The scope of the current consultation and the questions that we're keen to hear your views this evening. Um, do you agree with the council's ambition for our leisure service? Um, and we refer to the existing strategy and whether people have views on that. Um, specific questions about whether we should fund new facilities such as a new leisure centre uh, within the budget constraints that the council has to operate under. Um, and whether we should be making a significant investment in our leisure centres. Um, and then there are a set of questions very specific to the southwest of the borough, um, which uh, are kind of focused uh, because of the continued closure of St George's. And we ask about the options that we think there are and that are set out in the feasibility study I've referred to. Um, so coming on to those options, um, could do nothing, but the mayor hasn't made a commitment uh, to five pools in the borough. Um, we've looked at the options for a, a temporary pool, um, uh, which is known as a kind of demountable pool um, with, with a kind of limited uh, kind of lifespan. Uh, there's been some interest in a Lido. Um, I think we're clear that that wouldn't be a replacement for a leisure centre. It would be additional, uh, an additional offer for our residents. We've looked at the option of refurbishing St George's as it is so it can reopen. Uh, the option of fully rebuilding a new leisure centre on the St George's site the option of adding a pool to the existing John Orwell Leisure Centre or a new, a full, uh, a full new build of a Leisure Centre on the John Orwell site. Um, work has been ongoing with um, our schools in particular uh, to ensure that they are able to meet their curriculum commitments to teach uh, children in primary school to swim. Um, all schools bar seven, all our primaries bar seven have already um, been able to make arrangements for the school year. And we've agreed that we will provide free transport uh, to those seven uh, to be able to access other pools starting next term. Um, GLL have complemented uh, the work that we're doing there by setting up intensive swimming lessons for all those who need them in the October half term, which were, there was really good take up for. And so we're going to be repeating that GLL, will be repeating that in spring and summer term next year. Um, 
as well as uh, a targeted offer on any year sixes who still um, aren't able to swim in the final weeks of the summer term, so after they've completed their SATs and before term ends. Um, adult users uh, uh, have the access to the other pools that are open. Um, we have looked at the demountable, the temporary pool options um, and, and where that might be possible to site it. Um, but uh, we're not recommending it, this at that stage, in particular, as we think schools are, are able to meet their, their needs from the existing pools. Um, a quick summary of the feasibility study, which goes into a lot more detail, obviously, than is here, uh, carried out by Faulkner Brown's architects. So John Orwell's looked at a number of different options on the site um, with potential for um, adding to the existing centre on the east of the site or a new build on the south or the west of the site. Um, St George's, um, the fewer options to look at because it's a much tighter site, um, but, but again, we've looked at those. Uh, we've looked at the costings for refurbishing the current uh, pool at St George's. Um, and our current working assumption is that the council would only be able to afford one major investment, uh, not not two. Um, and we're clear that that if we do provide a new leisure centre, um, it really should provide it should it should be a great provision and provide a better range uh, as well as volume of facilities than are currently available. Uh, so quick graphic from the air of the St George's site. If you want to move on, Dean. So um, the current condition at St George's is um, is really problematic. Um, it was opened in the 60s, mid 60s, uh, in a design of its time. Um, the the reinforced concrete um, that is is characteristic of most of the structure has been significantly damaged by years of humidity and exposure to chlorides. Um, there's been rusting of the steel rods that sit within the concrete um, and uh, the plant is, uh, which is the original plant from uh, primarily from from when it was built and that is embedded within the within the basement of the uh, of the building structure essentially needs replacing. Um, our surveys have showed that it's possible to repair the building and bring it back into life, but but at very significant cost. Um, and that wouldn't necessarily address some of the profound structural weaknesses that um, that uh, uh, this long after it was built um, are, are difficult to to solve. Uh, some photos just just bearing out some of the issues that I've just referred to. Do you want to move on, Dean? Um, so the feasibility study has looked at either refurbishing or replacing with the new facility on the same site as St George's, and that specification is to the standard set by Sports England, which would be a 25 metre six lane pool with a separate teaching pool, four court sports hall, and at least 100 fitness stations and two studios, so significantly more than, than is there currently. The refurbishment option, our current estimates are that it would um, cost uh, approximately 13 million, uh, 13 and a half million um, to give it uh, a minimum of five years additional life. Um, usually uh, a leisure centre you'd expect to get um, a maximum of 40 years and we're well beyond that for St George's. Um, and the repairs that would be required would be really extensive to the structure, uh, to the plant, um, and we'd still have the same uh, the same footprint of the building and the same limited uh, facilities in there. Um, so uh, we do think that there's a real challenge around the value for money of refurbishment and the limited additional life that it would give. Um, in terms of new build at St George's, um, so I won't repeat the, the specification uh, that we've looked at. We have looked at whether a 33 metre pool would be possible in there, 
um, it's difficult. It, it's, it would cost significantly more and, and not be the standard that Sports England recommend. Um, it is possible that we might squeeze a little bit of housing at the west end of the site, which would uh, help uh, fund the facility. Um, and it wouldn't be room for car parking uh, within that, that footprint. Then the John Orwell site, um, again, essentially the same uh, specification uh, that we're looking at there in terms of swimming and the dry, dry side of facilities. So if you move on, Dean. Uh, and this, the, there's both the photo and a, and a kind of graphic of where the options are um, for a new facility. So one on the west, uh, two site two on the south and site three on the east, uh, which is where the current leisure centre building is. Um, site one on, on the west. Um, so um, this would be a new build. We would have to deal with the uh, covenant that there is on the land uh, that currently specifies it should be used for car parking. Uh, it's an overgrown bit of the site currently. Um, uh, potentially there would be an option to use some housing development to help fund it. Um, uh, we would retain uh, the, the listed building on the site, retain the hockey pitch as it is. Um, there would be some questions about how close uh, that, that would be to existing housing on, on Vaughanway and Codling Close. We move on to the site two option at the south side. Um, where there'll be easier kind of access. Um, uh, again, we'd retain the listed building. It would require turning the hockey pitch, rotating the hockey pitch by 90 degrees. So you'd still get the full size hockey pitch, um, but uh, with a different alignment. Um, and potentially that area on the west could then be used for uh, some, some housing. Um, Dean, if you move on to site three. OK, so um, this uh, is uh, an option that puts a new pool where there's car parking currently in the northeast corner of the site uh, and an option to re refurbish uh, the existing leisure centre. Um, uh, it, it is a bit of a bolt on of of uh, two bits, which is probably not an ideal design. Um, uh, it would retain the hockey pitch as it is. Uh, and again, that's that there's option for some housing uh, to help fund. Move on, Dean. So um, next steps. So public consultation continues to run for some weeks up to the 3rd of January, um, which is then in time for us to take a report to Cabinet at the end of January, uh, which is also aligned with the Council's uh, budget setting timetable. Uh, and the report would be looking specifically at the investment that the Council determines it will make in future leisure provision, um, and not just uh, for a decision on what to do in the southwest of the borough, but also what investment is required across the rest of the leisure estate. Um, we then will will come back later in the year um, to uh, a cabinet with uh, decisions about the way in which we will re-procure re or recommission and provide uh, our leisure provision when GLL's contract runs out at the end of April in 2024. And we anticipate bringing that back to cabinet in June or July of next year. So that's that's the end of the presentation. Uh, keen to get to open up to questions and comments, but first, if I can come to the mayor and councillor actor for any additional comments you want to make. Yeah. So shall I say a bit, or do you want to go first, Sabina? Chapu, don't mind. Do you want to go first? <coughs> you go first, Sabina. Okay. So. Um, so good evening, everyone. I'm really happy that we've had another opportunity to, to meet you all and discuss about the future of 
our leisure centers and leisure provision in the borough. Um, I know people are frustrated with some of the you know pools not reopening in for example your call Antilla but we have um, really really worked hard to get them up and running. Um, obviously St George's is where in a more of a difficult position but you know we're here today and we have a consultation going on and we need to really focus on how we ensure that the right facilities are there in the right places to meet residents needs and that from the consultation that we are doing um, we're not just doing the normal online consultation we are trying to reach out as many as much as we can and you know we've had steam groups uh, meetings and going to the um, leisure centers as well trying to tell people to you know go online or fill up the forms as well um so just want to say that we've made those decisions and we know how important the leisure centers are to people and that's why we really want to hear from the consultation and um it's a great way to kind of um how we can shape things um, and really want to get response, good responses so we can go in cabinet um, in January. And um, just really want to say that I know there's some people who've come into other meetings that we haven't made a final decision and the options that have been presented and you've seen the mayor's commitment and this is what we're working towards. And happy to take questions later on. Thanks. Okay, if I could just add to that. Um... I, I agree with what Sabina has said. I'm I'm very frustrated that we are where we are. I think the pool has needed. Uh, we can talk about the whole strategy, but I think people are here predominantly about the pool. I'm happy to address other parts of the strategy if they come up in the conversations. But uh, as regards St George's, it is. I've reached a conclusion, but I'm not an engineer. We've had various studies and reports, um, which are progressively being published. Um, and I know we sometimes don't spend time at these meetings disputing about whether the right reports have been published in the right order. And if necessary, we can clarify that. But I think we're in a we're reasonably up to date. Um, I, I want to understand from officers why we are where we are. Partly it's about the old age of St George's swimming pool. So it has reached uh, arguably the end of its life. Um, could be refurbished because, you know, anything's possible. Um, but it would be extremely expensive and there are questions about the underlying structure of it and how much life you get out of it by um, refurbishing it. <clears throat> so the alternative two options are either, given the five pool commitment that I've made, um, the alternative is to either rebuild on this site if we're not going to refurbish it or to rebuild on another site, most obvious place being uh, John Orwell. Um, there is a there's an argument for the John Orwell site because it provides a single complex on one site with a whole range of sports and recreational activities. Um, and that is arguably more cost effective than having disparate facilities in different places, although St George's is not that far away. The argument of having St George's, and there are other arguments of course as well, uh, but Wapping is a relatively, it's not isolated, we're a very small borough and you can get anywhere within you know a few minutes using public transport, but in terms of the borough, it's 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 um, in one corner of the borough. Um, it's a uh, it's one of the wealthiest corners of the borough, of course, as well. Um, the St George's site is in one of the cheek by jowl with Wapping. The other side of the highway is one of the more deprived areas in, in the borough. Uh, arguably, a facility placed there would better reach a bigger catchment of people, both in terms of proximity to public transport but also in terms of proximity to a deprived community. I, I want to hear all the options. Um, we don't have limitless money, of course, we have a duty to look after people's public money. I know that there is quite a lot of passion amongst some users of St George's about its length, because uh, it's one of the two pools in the borough that is 33 metres long, whereas the standard length nowadays is 25 metres. But also the, the vistas, if you like, the light conditions in there. So you, I used to swim in it a lot and you get a lot of light coming in through the windows. Uh, from the streets and, and the sky. Um, and I know people are very attached to that, but when you look at the numbers, it's a relatively smaller number of people because it has been in decline for some time. So standing still is not really an option. We could refurbish it, but it provides challenges in terms of a more comprehensive range of facilities. Uh, rebuilding it is doable. Um, rebuilding a, a pool on the Wapping site is doable as well. 
Um, we've also addressed questions about whether it should could short term be recommissioned, so put into working order for three or four or five years or something while a replacement's made. Obviously, that couldn't be done if the replacement was to knock it down. Could be done if the replacement was in whopping technically, but we're advised and very happy for these things to be examined that the cost would be eight or nine or ten million pounds uh, without doing all the things that are required. And so we'd have a value for money question about whether that was a reasonable thing to do or not. But I'm very happy to answer questions as well, and and I'm very happy to have searching questions about this. I've been, I suppose I should finish by saying that I'm frustrated that it hasn't reopened, and I've wanted to understand from my officers and elsewhere why, having been closed for COVID, we couldn't just press a button and turn it on again. I think it's sheer decrepitude. The analogy being a bit like an old car uh, has meant that it's rather more difficult to do that. The state of the machinery inside it, and there have been various surveys and reports into this make it more difficult. Um, uh, and the fact it's been switched off for a time make it more difficult as well. And so I've asked um, Mr Thomas, who's the, the head uh, executive officer in the council, to investigate, um, not in a sort of White House tapes fashion, but in a, in a thoughtful fashion, what's happened, who should have done what, and why we are where we are. And I think that's a reasonable set of questions to ask. I'll, I'll stop now. Thank you, Councillor Actor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, right, let's open it up for for questions and comments. Um, either put your hand up if you want to come in or put something in the chat. Nilesh, um, did you want to come on? You, you made a point in the chat about uh, the Lido option. Did you want to come on, Nilesh, or would you like us just to respond to your, your chat comment? Just going to wait and see if you want to speak to your point uh doesn't look we're not hearing you from from you Nilesh so okay so Nilesh says you underplay the level of interest uh in the Lido option um there's significantly more than just some interest um and I'm gonna sort of invite one of the panel to go first on answering each question although then we can uh, others may want to come in Judith um I might come to you first just to to say what consideration that we've given uh, thus far to to the option of a Lido for the borough. I think that we 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 have considered it, but it is really about the 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 preeminent pre thing that we need to do now at this point. And I think that you've um, covered that, James. That the priority really at this moment is to get the five existing pools. Um, it, up and running and functioning with a key decision on that investment and that the Lido would be in, in the next phase of investment were we to do that. So it's really about the priority at this point being making sure that we get it right with the five pools that the, the mayor has committed to. Yeah, but is it, um, but would we be open minded if, if it were possible to provide yeah. a Lido? Um, but that would be a sort of added extra. Absolutely. It would be in addition to not a yeah. replacement for. Yeah. 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 Great. Thank you, Judith. Uh, Mayor? I'm, I'm happy to add to that. Um, that uh, I mean, I agree with that. I don't think a Lido, which is obviously you can envisage all sorts of versions of Lido, which this might not apply. But a Lido, which is essentially a seasonal activity and is and is uh, very much seen, I think, as a a more leisure activity than a sports activity centre. Could be an open air Lido with competitive sports on it, but tends not to be in the modern setting as I understand it. If you look around, I, I, I like the idea of a Lido. I think it's a very attractive idea and, you know, um, it would cost quite a lot of money. It would have to be subsidised or wash its own face financially. Um, in the end, the council would have to carry the risk for that, even if a third party said that they had the resources to make it work. If you look around London, there's a very successful Lido, which is the London Fields Lido in Hackney, just up the road. But there's a number of others which struggle because of their age or investment or the profile of people who use them. So um, it is an attractive idea, but currently with our budget pressures, we'd have to do very rigorous business case analysis, even if a third party wanted to do it for us. Because in the event that their assumptions were flawed, we'd end up inheriting an asset which didn't have um, a viable business case by definition because we'd inherited it. And, and we need to think very hard about that. So I don't want to create white elephants, but I do like the idea of one. Um, every now and then a developer in the borough offers us a Lido or offers an outdoor swimming pool, often in a, in, a, in a graving dock by the River Thames on the Isle of Dogs. We've had a couple that popped up as options. And 
none of them have yet seen the light of day, but it is an attractive option. But I think, as Judith has said, it's not really part of the five leisure centre um, options appraisal which we're looking at. Thank you, Mayor. Um, right, I'm going to come to Amanda next and then to you, Rhiannon, with your question in the chat. But, but Amanda, first, do you want to come on? Everybody, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, I'd like to pick up a few points you made, James. Um, so you're saying about St George's. Um, one of the reasons it's in the condition it is because of the negligence over the past 40 odd years. So that's not, it's a bit disingenuous saying that the age is like the actual age of the pool that prevented it from being reopened. It's the, it is actually the negligence of various councils over the years. So um, you need to correct that. And the other thing is um, on the documents, the, the other documents still aren't available. So you, you've run a consultation where, where documents are just appearing ad hoc. So um, I, I, personally, I think that the, the, the consultation is dishonest because you have a survey with the questions on one side, and then on the other side, and this polls apart, is the, the feasibility options. And most people aren't going to look at those because they're, they're quite difficult to understand and you, you need to kind of invest a lot of time. And also, if, if you're not online or confident of being online, how do you take part in the survey? Because I emailed last week to the, the email sports at Tower Hamlets to ask if paper copies would be accepted or if you could send me a paper copy and I haven't had an answer. So how do people who aren't online take part in the survey? That's it. You're muted, James. James, you're, you're muted. muted. Yeah. Thank Good. you. Well, Apologies. Well, um, I was muted when I said you were muted, so I was the second person to be muted. Thanks, Amanda. So two questions there. Um, maybe let's go in reverse order. Judith, do you want to um, address um, Amanda's questions about the consultation specifically? And then we'll come back to yeah. St George's investment over the years. So we have um, Amanda put in place uh, drop in sessions for people who are um, not online with, with face to face ability. And we have also offered to um, to give people who've asked them who've asked for them paper copies. And I can only apologize that you um, weren't responded to because we have tried to pick up the um, things going through to the web, to the email um, inbox within 48 hours of them going in. So I will look into that for you and I do apologize. But at the moment, we are able to send those out to people who ask for them. In the main, though, we found that people who've attended the face to face, they are quite interested in just telling us what they think already in terms of, of, of their feedback. And we do encourage them to um, complete the surveys if they wish. But we're also taking people's spoken um, comments as well on board. Thank you, Judith. Um, and then, Amanda, your, your other uh, I'm not sure it was a question, but but your, your concern um, that uh, no, it was that St George's um, hasn't had sufficient investment for a prolonged period of time. Um, I mean, I'll, let me have a first go at, at answering that one, um, and then I'll see if others want to come in. I mean, Amanda, you, you, you probably know I'm relatively new to Tower Hamlet's been here for for coming up for a year and a half, um, but obviously I've I've looked at um, a number of the reports that that, that there have been over the years um, and uh, so I understand why you're why you're posing that question because a number of reports certainly going back to at least 2003 have identified the need for investment in St George's um, there have been rounds of investment in the building uh, over that time um, and quite significant sums of money have been spent. Um, that hasn't been sufficient to address some of the profound issues that a building of that design and age now have. So 
Um, but I think it's again the, the question probably has been there for some years about whether it's a value for money investment um, uh, to put very, very substantial sums into such an aging building. Is that I don't, if any, I don't know if anybody else wants to come in on that. No, can, can, I, can I add to that, please? No, the, the, the reports date back to 1978. That's, t that's less than 10 years after it was built. So it, it, th th that's just not true. The, the, the building has been starved of money for decades. No wonder it looks the way it does and no one wants to go there. It's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, thanks, Amanda. Anybody else want to comment? And then I'm going to come to Rhiannon. Mayor? So, I mean, I, I'd agree that it is in a cycle of decline, and I would agree that the council has not invested in it. The question, I guess, is whether uh, in the time uh, that it should have made decisions, that was the right decision to make, or whether we've been facing a decision for some time, which was that it made better sense to redevelop. And I think the council has fudged that decision for a long time, and I want us to make that decision in January next year, which is whether we refurbish it, which the very clear advice from this meeting, uh, and happy for everyone to inspect the documents behind it, insofar as they make sense, didn't help to clarify the argument for non-experts like myself. Um, I, there's a very clear recommendation from officers that it's better to redevelop the pool and build a new one. Um, whether if we'd spent money in a timely fashion a few years ago, we would be in a better place, Quite possibly, I guess the council has uh, seen big ticket items, decided some years ago to re to build a new leisure centre in Marlin Park. Um, uh, previous mayor, of course, built the new pool at Poplar Baths. And um, there have been one or two pools that have closed in the past in Tamworth. There was one just in Allgate, of course, many years ago as well. So it's changed a bit down the years. I guess we, we have corporately over a decade and more avoided the decision about what to do with St George's. Um, I am frustrated that it was switched off at the COVID period. People didn't appreciate how, but you were at the last meeting, Amanda, of course, whereas other people in the call might not have been. I'm frustrated that at that meeting, um, uh, I'm frustrated that, 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 that when we switched off for COVID, although people may have anticipated the COVID crisis might have been shorter than it was, we nevertheless switched it off and it wasn't possible to switch it back on again without a lot of work. And, I, and I've asked, as I said in my opening comments, Mr Thomas to clarify why that was the case. Maybe it was inevitable. Maybe there's questions to be answered. Maybe there's lessons to be learned. Probably doesn't alter the fact that it's going to take a lot of money to get it started up again. And maybe that would always have been the case. You can always do a unprovable alternative hypothesis, which is if only someone had done something, everything would be perfect. I have a feeling, that, I mean, I was I was swimming in it 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and then it wasn't perfect. It was a really hot, sweaty place, it Was and that was in the early 1980s. Uh, so I guess it's only 15, 20 years old then. Uh, and even then, it, it felt like quite a challenging environment. But, but we are where we are. And uh, my commitment is to make a decision in January and get a move on with it, but also to clarify what happened during COVID, why it was switched off in the way it was switched off, whether that's helped to make it more difficult for it to switch on again. Can I ask why why, Council, why you haven't had the reply yet then to that question? I think why wasn't it switched off? Mr Thomas is a very polite man and I'm probably marginally less polite than him. I think the way the meeting works, you can ask supplementary questions and maybe indicate on them, but if people are coming back with answers, then you can come back with supplementaries, but he's chairing this session. So Councillor Actor. Yeah, I just wanted to add um, the comment is, that I am sure that we've made some investments to St George's Judith um, over the years. So the fact that we didn't do anything, that there were some investments. But the question is, even before pandemic, we were in a situation where St George's was running in a you know deficit and for some years. And the question is now, you know, even with the investment in that site, you know, and looking at the past years in terms of membership and the usage, um, you know. Would it be value for money us investing, invest, investigating um, investment on this site and reopening the pool um, or rebuild the whole site, um, the centre? Will it will it be financially viable in the future? This is what we need to 
um, kind of thing, but, but looking in the past, even the membership to even when we've had investment, um, it wasn't a small deficit. We were actually running some huge losses so even before the pandemic. But obviously the question is, you know, when we switched it off, um, had we switched it on, perhaps it would have been easier to reopen than obviously having that huge um, length of time where it was closed. So obviously it's more investment required now to reopen. Thanks, Councillor Akhtar. Um, Amanda, if I come back to you one more time for any supplementary and then I'm going to go to Rhiannon. Amanda, did you want to come back? But Joe, um, I, 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 to be honest, I don't think this is the point about like minimum amounts of investment. The fact is that it's been starved of money for 40 years. Obviously, it's going to look like that. It's going to look neglected and abandoned. And uh, there, there's, no, there's been no real commitment from anyone to say, with the, I mean, this is like an iconic building. It, it should be saved. You, you sh it, it's not really safe in your hands to demolish it. It's, it's not a problem. It's an asset. And I think that's the problem. You just see it as some kind of albatross or millstone around your neck. And it actually isn't. It's something astonishing. And you're just going to demolish it and build some two bob pool and a load of bog standard housing. And that, that, that just, it, it's just not the right thing to do. And I think we, we had a fair on Saturday in Wapping, which is why I wanted the paper survey, but they didn't arrive. And every person disagreed completely with putting a pool at John Elwell. They all live in Wapping. Not one of them agreed that that pool should be demolished. They all agreed that it should stay, it should be refurbished and that John Orwell should, shouldn't have a poll. And I, I, I don't think you, you understand any of this properly. I mean, the, the survey doesn't bear any resemblance to what you're actually putting forward. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Amanda. Your, your points are very clearly articulated. Um, I don't know if uh, any of the panel want to come back on any of those points. I know the Mayor, Mayor you've already commented on the kind of respective issues of the two sites. Um, anybody want to comment further? Well, well, I live in Wapping and I know lots of people in Wapping and I'm I'm not being lobbied daily to save St George's swimming pool by people in Wapping. I know there are people with a passion which I respect and that doesn't mean I want to I want to demolish St George's and scrub it out and build a pool in Wapping. This is a consultation. There are efficiency benefits if we were to demolish St George's in rebuilding pool in Wapping because you get a single management on a single site. People would do all sorts of things together, changing facilities, ventilation systems, plant and stuff can be more efficiently managed. But there are other reasons why it might go onto another site. It might re be remaining in in on the St George's site and we just need to do the numbers on that. And I think some basic numbers have been done which suggest that both of those are viable options. Uh, one is probably more cost efficient than that than the other. I'm very clear also that if we build a pool, um, for as long as I'm around, I, I would want it to be a, uh, I, I say a beautiful pool. I want it to be an attractive building, which is pleasant to swim in because you don't just go to climb into a concrete box to have a swim. I think it needs to be part of the experience and um, I'd like to see that happen. But we're at risk of repeating stuff we discussed at last meeting, Amanda. Thanks, Mayor. Right, Rhiannon, I'm going to come to you. Uh, Rhiannon, did you want to come on, come on and ask your question that you put in the chat or I can just read it out? Happy for you to just read it. OK, thanks, Rhiannon. So it's um, with the offer to provide transport to schools to other pools in the borough in the interim. Have you contacted these schools to ask about the impact travelling time to popular mile end bars would have on other aspects of learning? Um, yes, is the short answer. Um, Judith, do you want to say a little bit more? Yes, absolutely. So we've done quite a bit of work with the local schools, the seven schools in particular. Um, to make sure that from January exactly that will happen. So we've had discussions with them individually looking at the way in which their curriculums work to make sure that we can get the transport in place in a timely fashion that fits in with what the schools want to do. And um, we've been, they, they've been very happy with, with the arrangements that we have um, suggested in conjunction with them. So yes, I think is the answer to that. 
Can I just ask which seven schools they are? Um, just because a few schools who we've engaged with, um, a shovel responds, haven't had contact slash have expressed a worry about curriculum. I should be clear that these are our maintained schools, Tower Hamlet schools, not independent schools that we've contacted. So, um, sure, these are Tower Hamlet schools as well. All yeah. right. So, um, I don't have the list in front of me right now. I'm sorry, I can't give you the names, but I'm more than happy to provide them for you. But every single school has been contacted. There's not one that hasn't been contacted. So, if you wouldn't mind, outside of this meeting, I will share that with you and um, I will make sure that we go back to the to the schools that say they haven't been um, contacted. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll give Thanks. that undertaking, Rhiannon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Judith. Um, right, can I encourage anyone else who wants to come on with any questions? We don't have any currently any hands up or any any further questions in the chat. Uh, whilst we're waiting to see, I uh, just turn back to the panel to see if there are any other comments anybody wants to make. Yes, Councillor Wood, yeah, we're more than happy to share a copy of the presentation. Amanda, can we come back to you then? Hello again. Um, well, while you say that no decisions have been made, for when you look at the feasibility studies for John Orwell, it, it does actually look like you've already decided. Um, that, that's the way it reads. And when I, when I printed out all the stuff for our fair on sun, Saturday, and other people pointed that out as well, it does look like you have actually opted for something. But whether it was done, I don't know. But whether you realise that or not, but but you do look like you've made a decision, and I I think that's really unfortunate. Because it looks like the consultation is a formality. So I think, well, thank, thanks, Amanda. Um, I, I can see others on the panel probably want to comment, but I'll I'll go first. Which is, I mean, I'd give you my assurance, Amanda. That's that's genuinely not the case. Um, I mean, one of the first principles of consultation is that the consultation should be able to influence a decision that's going to be made, um, and uh, we haven't set up this consultation uh, with a with a predetermined decision. Um, we've shared the feasibility study and appreciate not everybody uh, will will want to read that level of detail. But for those who are interested, um, obviously we, we set out the options in some detail there. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can certainly give my assurance that no, no, no predetermined decisions have been made here. Yeah, I'm happy to come. Councillor Actor, yep. Yeah, so echoing you, James, um, absolutely no decision has been made, and that is why we are, you know, meeting, um, not just, you know, doing the normal usual consultation, we're having several meetings as such. And I'd just like to say the level of investment that is needed, you know, we need to show people when we are, when we do have options. You know, we're not just saying this is the, you know, we need to show evidence, we need to show research, what's been done. And, um, you know, the feasibility studies show that, you know, it's not a minor um, decision that we're taking. It's just a huge, significant, huge investments required. So, you know, the options that we are showing to everyone, it clearly shows that, you know, we're not just saying ABC. We're saying, look, this could be one option and given the proper details, verification as well. And myself and the mayor, when we visited um, St George's, we didn't just visit, we proper asked for each um, section, each department, the repairs needed, um, with proper analysis, um, you know, with the extent of how much, how, you know, what has exactly happened um, in terms of the requirement, um, the required investment. So we're not just saying, you know, this is an option. We're actually showing as well, there is an option of rebuilding St George's uh, pool at the side as well. So we're not just saying John Orwell or do you want a new one. We're actually showing an option of St George's as well. So this is genuine. We want to hear from everyone and that's why we've showed the various um, options. <coughs> so can I add to that and, and be at risk of being a little bit more reckless in my answer by saying that anyone watching the slideshow would have to conclude 
that the presentation suggested that there would be quite severe technical and operational problems with refurbishing the existing pool. Uh, it could almost certainly be done cheaper than building a new pool, but it would, in terms of its future lifetime and costs, and in terms of its ability to manage the modern expectations, which is to have, even if it is a standalone pool at the St George's site, to have a range of ancillary activities alongside it. So it would have a gymnasium and maybe some other um, sports courts or whatever within it. Um, that that couldn't be very easily facilitated within the existing building without without knocking big holes in it and building extensions to it. Um, and I think I think that's fairly self evident from the presentation. I think the point that was made at the previous meeting in the in the town hall in the council chamber was that the way the building was built, which is in some ways bizarre, but presumably made sense at the time. You you build a concrete box, you put all the plant in, and then you seal it up a bit like Tutankhamun's tomb, I guess. You know, that's the analogy that came to my mind. Not quite as ancient as that. Uh, which means that to refurbish it, you have to get all the equipment out. You have to sort of cut it into pieces and take it out, and it's very difficult to get that size of equipment back into the basement. So you'd have to do massive construction works to get it back into good nick as well. So if you were to refurbish it and, and, and put it back into operation, the reason it would be quite expensive is you'd have to cut into it and substantially rebuild it. And given questions about the underlying fabric, which is about 60 years old and the evidence of, of decay in the metalwork within the concrete, I guess that points towards that being a less favorable option than it would be if it was simply a, a lick of paint. If it was a lick of paint, then we could just do it tomorrow and it wouldn't, we wouldn't be sitting here today. So I, I, maybe I'm straying beyond what the others have said, but that doesn't mean we can't make that decision, but we we would be, we would have some advice. Now there is someone else in the in the background on this call who um, who is doing more technical project work on this. Uh, and we could, we could talk to him, but it might make sense to talk to him at another time. He's our project officer and he's, got experience of rebuilding um, a pool in Hackney, the Britannia Leisure Centre, and he could perhaps tell us about that. But we have a very small turnout at this meeting here this evening, but um, I, I don't think we've got any big secrets about this. But I'm assuming that alongside the evidence from the consultation of people saying, I, I like this pool, I want to keep it, or I don't like this option, I don't want to follow that option, um, we'll also have to have some technical advice that says, you know, the costs of doing this are such, and the costs of doing that are such, and that needs to be challengeable because because genuinely there is no um, agenda uh, which says let's just not the let's just knock it down and do what we want. Um, but there is a consultation and we need to look at the options within that. Hopefully that hasn't and, and you see in saying that I'm pushing the boat out a bit because the principle of consultation is you don't make your mind up in advance and I haven't made my mind up. But I think anyone looking at the slides would and I think that may be why people are making comments in the chat line would have to conclude that it's pretty evident that the advice is that an old building being refurbished, it raises a different set of challenges to a new building being built. That's 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 my contribution. I hope that was helpful, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Amanda, did you... as, as mayor, by definition, everything I say is helpful, I think, but I'm very happy to be knocked down um, and, and, and for people to come back. No, thank you, Matt. Um, Amanda, did you want to come back with us supplementary? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say thank you, Howard Carter, for the Tutankhamun reference. Um, I, 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 I just don't think enough effort's been put into refurbish to looking at refurbishing St George's. I really don't. I think this housing thing, it's, it's like, who who really would want to live on the highway for a start? It's, it's it's the completely wrong place to put housing. If you want to have a housing option, put it on John Orwell. That you you could do amazing. I've I've said this before. I'm going to say again that you could do amazing things on the site of John St George's. You could put a high you could put a hydro pool there. You could put a spa there. You could build on top of the studio. There are so many options. I don't agree that it's a very tight footprint. And the options. This is what the the project director said to me last week. Yeah, there, there's not enough options. There are lots of options there. It's just there, there, there's just not enough vision or imagination. It's like oh, this pool's rubbish now. It's it's a, it's come to its end date. Let's build another one at St at John Orwell. It's going to be a 25 meter pool. It's never going to be able to do the things that St George's did. You you would never be able to have the the tons of activities going on at the same time 
It, you're just going to lose so much. And I don't think people understand this. I really don't. It's not going to be a deep pull. It's going to be a, a, a normal pull. You, you, you can't get diving going on. You can't have any, all of those things are gone. And you, you really do need to understand this. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Councillor Actor. Yeah, I just want to get clarification from officers. So if we were to rebuild at St George's uh, with a new brand new leisure centre and a thriving new pool, um, I know the sentiment, you know, the 33 centi um, metres was very light and popular. Um, but if we were to rebuild um, a new pool in St George's, it wouldn't be 33 metres, would it? It would be 25. Yep. Yes, that's right. The cu the current um, standards by Sport England are twenty five for a twenty five meter pool, and um, for most sporting activities, a twenty five meter pool is the correct length for what you need to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would also I would also say in terms of diving that since St George's was built, of course, we've got a, a world-class um, diving pool um, up the road on on, uh, on the Olympic site as well, which most um, diving clubs are using now. They prefer to use that because it's such high quality um, okay. uh, facility. Okay. Even though the guidance is 25 meters, if there is space and there is money in investment, would it be possible to have a fake free if we were to rebuild in St George's? We would have to be able to show, if we were going for funding from um, uh, Sport England, the reason why we would be um, recommending that, because it is so not what current modern um, standards require for swimming pools. It's metric now. When St George's was built, it, it's actually 33.3 yards, and, and that's not a standard any, that, that's adhered to anymore. People don't build pools like that, new pools anymore. OK, thanks. Mayor, did you want to comment? I, I think I think you covered that ground. I was interested in the point about diving. I suppose the principle is, in theory, a longer pool will have a will have a, uh, a gentle gradient going to a deeper depth where you can dive. But and it, you can you can dive at your call, I think. Um, I'm not sure you can dive at the other pools in the borough. I don't think they are deep enough for diving. Um, so certainly that's the questions that Amanda's raised about diving and, and stuff are valid questions and they should be submitted as part of the consultation and we need to answer them. I think that's perfectly reasonable. OK, um, Amanda, I think we'll come back to you one more time and then uh, we might be coming towards a close if nobody else is going to ask any further questions, just just so others on the call, um, if you do want to come in, uh, if you can be preparing any questions that you've got. Um, Amanda, back to you one more time. Hello, yeah, um, just on the, the, of the poll and also um, not everyone can go to Stratford. That's not an option. I, I, I don't think that should even be put on the table. It's not like oh, if you want to go diving, go to Stratford. No, that's not good enough. You, you have a facility here. You should use it and and and, and make a big deal of it. I'm not 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 direct everyone to go to Stratford. That's wrong. And also, um, so I used to go swimming every day in St George's of a morning. And some mornings you would have maybe four or five activities going on at the same time. You used to have school swimming lessons, public swimming, the police diving team and an aqua aerobics class. That, that could not possibly be, um, you, you, you couldn't accommodate that in a 25 metre pool. So, I mean, when I spoke to Michael Coleman last week, he said, oh, we could timetable it. That's not the point. The whole point is that the pool, pool was very busy and, and that, that's what made it so astonishing. You're going to lose all of that, and that's my issue. Is you're going to lose so many things by just putting in a bog standard 25 meter pole. And I, th I think because maybe none of you go it, maybe none of you have used that pole for a long time. I don't know, but but if if you'd have used it and seen it, you you would know how I feel and how a lot of other people feel. Thank you, thanks, Amanda. Your, yeah, your strength of feeling comes comes through loud and clear. Um, 
Alex, I'm going to come to you. You've got your hand up. Do you like to come in with a question or a comment? Uh, yeah, hi, um, I'm Alex Corey. I'm here um, representing Wapping Hockey Club. I'm the vice chair of community. I attended the last meeting. I didn't realise this was a rerun of the last one. Um, but I just kind of wanted to, so I don't, I agree with the points that are being made about St George's. I'm still very new myself to Wapping and only lived here for just over a year and a bit now. Um, but my obviously major concerns are with JO and that Wapping Hockey Club are thought about as well as sort of London Royals as well. We use Wapping Hockey Club, we use that pitch um, throughout the week for our training sessions. Um, our thriving junior section of over 130 kids from across the borough. Um, and then obviously on Saturdays and Sundays, we use games and kids tournaments. Um, so just wanted to sort of put our sort of name in the hat and just be like, look, we're, we're really invested in making sure that JO keeps its hockey pitch. Um, Definitely in the orientation it is it as it is because there would be a worry that if it did get rotated it's probably the last thing on the list of things to do and that would really disrupt our teams and our kids section because we have over 19 teams across well 80 we've got sorry 18 senior sides and we've got um, two sunday sides and a thriving junior section who are playing most weekends obviously our biggest concern would be if the pitch gets um altered or whatever we've got a lot of people to try and relocate and a lot of matches to try and find space to play at which there isn't that many AstroTurfs really available due to East London having such a big hockey side um, London Royals as well and we even though we do play at um, Lee Valley at the hockey centre there um, they're at max capacity like it's only our top teams that play there so yeah just say want to make sure that we're kept in the loop and make sure that the hockey pitch doesn't get altered and doesn't get turned into five side pitches which i know generate more money for councils but um we've got um a club of 400 plus people who love that pitch and play there on a regular basis and have the health benefits and all of that that come with it no, th thank you thank you thank you alex um mayor do you want to well, I, I really appreciate that point, and this is no way designed to belittle the conversation about swimming pools, which is has, has dominated discussion so far. But I make two points. The first one is um, that this is an overall consultation on the sports strategy for the borough, and that includes the whole range of sports that we offer, and including ones that we don't offer at present. I'm aware we've got two reasonable quality hockey facilities in the borough, one at Myland Stadium and the other down in Wapping. Uh, certainly, as long as I'm alive, there's no intention to reduce that number. Sadly, there's probably not resource to increase that number. Uh, I think there's been quite a lot of useful investment. And uh, in fact, I was going to make two points, I'll make a, th a third point as well. The, the second point then is that the way in which hockey works in the borough is through partnership. Uh, so we have clubs who play there, we support the facilities. When we when we put the, the new hockey surface there, there was sponsorship from one of the funding bodies, uh, which helped us, or part of the funding was from, from an outside source, which helped us. And it means that we're generating good facilities for local people. We're also helping to feed people into elite sports. Indeed, the clubs that play there are pretty good quality as well. Um, uh, the third point then is that um, I, I, I appreciate that the that the pool is a is a domineering issue, but I but I just want to make sure politically with a small P that it's not it doesn't crowd out the whole range of other issues. There are other sports that potentially people might want to play. So I'm quite regularly being lobbied about cricket, for example, in the borough. And, and you know, if we have an overall sports strategy, we need to provide for those desires as well in Tower Hamlets. Um, so we need to get this swimming pool thing right. But we also need to look at the future of John Orwell. And, and I guess we have a leisure strategy. It'd be very reasonable for people responding to leisure strategy to, to respond about what they currently like and don't like about John Orwell. Um, as you say, there's an insatiable demand for five-a-side football pitches in the borough. You could build a hundred, a hundred more, uh, maybe not a hundred more. You could build another dozen quite easily and still be booked out the whole time. And it's great that people get fit through five-a-side football, but no plan to reduce the hockey facility. But it could be, if you look at John Orwell, that people would say, well, the changing facilities are a bit tired. There's not much uh, in terms of um, um, uh, hospitality there. So, you know, is there a cafe that works effectively? Um, is there a potential with the land around that 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 uh, sports centre to provide some other sports facilities? Now we don't have unlimited money, but we do have some money. We're in a fairly advantageous position compared to some because we get quite a lot of money from developers. And if there is demand for other stuff in the borough, then we should be looking at that as well. So I really appreciate your comments, Alex. But I suppose my bottom line is there's no threat to the hockey offer. 
although it may be that we can improve what we're doing down at John Orwell uh, alongside or as part of what we're talking about with the swimming pools. And again, just in case anyone's worried, that doesn't mean that I've made my mind up that we should build a pool down in John Orwell. I want to see where the consultation goes on this. Um, thank you very much for your comments. Um, that's uh, really good and answered everything I needed. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alex. And, and just to echo the Mayor briefly, Alex, I mean, I hope you're reassured by the fact that all of the options and the feasibility show us retaining a hockey pitch at John Orwell, um, so not, not at risk. Right, uh, no more hands up, no more questions in the chat. So, um, uh, Councillor Actor, Mayor, I might invite you to make some closing comments uh, and draw this uh, meeting to a close. I'm not sure I need to add anything really, but Sabine is our, our lead cabinet member. I think we've had a, a conversation around the particular points of interest this evening. Um, we've had a quite a low turnout. Um, obviously this, I don't know if this is being recorded, it is being recorded so it can be played back. Um, and, um, uh, you know, we welcome more contributions until the consultation closes, which was the date was indicated on the slide. What was that, James? 3rd of January. Um, right, yeah, for myself, um, nothing more I would like to add. Just the fact that um, that the third of January is the last day. Um, I know some people have requested for a longer period of uh, consultation, but obviously, if we need to um, get some a decision made uh, for the cabinet on in January, it's also because we're trying to. Um, get the budget in line as well for next year as well so we really really can't push the consultation period time and um for those who have any um experiences or if you want to let us know that something's not working please email us okay thank you and thank you to everybody for attending this evening um very grateful for your contributions take care have a good evening thank you